Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shannon. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. I hope you're doing so very well. Today I'm doing my bullet journal spread for the month of May and I decided to go with this kind of like computer layout. I actually found the inspiration on Instagram and kind of made it my own a little I really enjoy the aesthetic of this like open tabs on a computer and I've never actually done this kind of bullet journal spread before so I thought it would be a really good idea so I decided to put like a kind of glitched font it was my first time doing this font and I think I would change it up a little bit next time because I want to be more precise with my lines I think it would have made it stand out a bit more but for a first attempt I was pretty happy with how it turned out. I mean the spread itself turned out pretty nice and I'm pretty happy with the colour palette that I chose and the line work that I did. A lot of this spread is based on the line work so yeah like as long as you've got your lines down I think you're pretty fine but I think I would pay a bit more attention to detail the next time I do a spread like this. This spread is pretty straightforward and because of that I thought I would talk through some of the books I read in the month of April. No spoilers so you're completely okay to listen along as you watch me fill out this spread. <laughs> the first and probably best book that I want to talk about is The Night Shift by Alex Finlay. This was a thriller kind of mystery and in this we follow three different points of views because in 1999 there was a mass murder at a blockbuster store and there was a suspect but he got away and then in present day there is again another mass murder but this time it's set at the ice creamery and we follow three points of view in this we follow Ella who is the only survivor from the blockbuster attack in 1999 we also follow the brother of the accused boy, Vince, in 1999. And then we follow the FBI agent, Sarah Keller, who is a badass, if I must say so myself. This book was really well written and I enjoyed the direction that it took. It was a little bit of a... It was interesting, the point of view that was taken at the start. I wondered why these characters why these points of view but as you get into the story and realize the twists and turns that this book has the points of view make so much more sense i highly recommend this i gave it a 4.5 star this was close to a perfect thriller for me i will definitely be picking up more from this author and i highly recommend it this part here is what i'm meaning about the lines I think the next time I do this font, when I do the blue and red lines, I think I would make the lines more intentional the next time I done this. I kind of just went in and, and put lines where I thought they would go. But next time, if I'm more intentional, this font might have a bigger effect. Also, it's essentially moving everything in a box over to the left side. And I think if I made it more pronounced, it would have came across better. But we all learn as we do. And I'm fairly happy with how this turned out for a first attempt. The next book I would like to talk about is She and I by Hannah King. And this is again another thriller. I guess we're just having a ball with all the thrillers. I've been in a really thriller, scary horror mood at the moment. I don't know it came out of nowhere but I'm rolling with it because I love me some horror thriller yeah so I'm in a very horror thriller mood and the next book is She and I and it's about a friendship so Jude and Keely have been friends since they've been little girls and they're the essential best friend duo they share everything they do everything together and when they wake up one day after a party, they wake up to find Keely's boyfriend dead, stabbed, gone. And the, and the next thing that they share is the story that they're going to tell police. Again, this is another book that was told in multiple points of view. 
points of view and I did really enjoy the aspect of hearing from different voices but the main thing I absolutely loved about this book was the friendship. The friendship between Jude and Keely was written so strongly and you really do truly believe that these are best friends that would lie for each other, kill for each other, protect each other and I will say just look up some trigger warnings. I know off of the top of my head there's trigger warnings for bullying, attempted assault, assault, drug use and murder. There is quite a few trigger warnings. I'm probably missing some out as I'm just rolling them off the top of my head. But if you are looking for a thriller that at its core is the story of two best friends trying to protect each other, I highly recommend this. This was a four star read. I really enjoyed it. It was more... I was highly anticipating this because I got it from the Granite Noir event here in Aberdeen, put on by the Performing Arts. And I was highly anticipating it because I got to hear the author talk about the work before I even read it. And I was worried that it wasn't going to live up to what I had imagined in my head, but it does live up to it. And I also got my copy signed to one of the friends, Keely. Me and my best friend Sefi decided that we were Jude and Keely and we were going to get them dedicated to one of the characters. And with one question, the author decided who was going to get dedicated to who. And I can tell you, mine's is dedicated to Keely and I am not mad about it. I think Keely's a great character. And if there was one thing, <laughs> I did relate to Keely. If there was one thing that I would say that was a little bit off was that Keely had the confidence I mean like confidence is key but I don't think I quite have Keely's confidence but yeah this was a very fast very fast thrilling thriller wow you know descriptive language on this channel and yeah it was a it was a good time it was the characters and friendship was very well written so I highly recommend this here I'm just going in and doing all the lines that need to be done for this spread. I used the oh, I'm going to get this I'm going to get this so wrong. Fudineski pen by Tombow, brush pen by Tombow. This pen is a game changer. I bought two and I'm running out. So I need to buy more. They are absolutely amazing for line work. I used that for all the black lines then I went in with a mild liner I bought these off of Amazon they were really cheap oh I lost the nail yep there we go there we have it <laughs> the cost of war when doing bullet journals who says that bullet journals are not dangerous we're losing nails in this video apparently <laughs> So I used this mild fine liner. It has a highlighter at one side and a thin point at the other. I bought these on a really cheap pack on Amazon and they're good. The only problem is, is that if you go over the lines, it darkens the line so much that you would need to go over every part of the line to make it the same color. And they're a little hard to use, I will say. I do think you could find better markers like this for the same kind of value I just use them because I bought them and I have them on hand and we do not waste anything on this channel so yeah like I am using them I am finding ways that they work for things but you do need to be very careful to only go over bits one at a time or else you will end up with one a completely different color and two it might tear up your page but I am not mad with how it turned out in the long run. I think that it worked perfectly for this spread. I only needed to go over small portions, so there wasn't much overlap. For the red in the May font, I used a Crayola Super Tip. And for the blue, I used a Tombow brush pen. I also just used this black clickable ballpoint pen I don't know if that's actually what it's called um for like the little details in the corners of all the boxes and 
I then again use it on the next spread for all the numbers in the calendar. So a very simple supply was used for this spread, which was nice. It was nice to just kind of play about with lines and write in. I normally used to draw quite a lot in my bullet journal and then I found stickers and washi tape and I started doing a bigger, grander kind of spreads. But it was really nice to go back to what I used to do and just use a very simple supplies and still create something that I like the look of in the end. So yeah. So yeah, this spread is very easy to do and if you're looking for a spread for your bujo, then I highly recommend something like this. It is quick and easy and you don't need a lot of fancy shit to pull it off. The final book I'm going to talk about is going to be Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Not another thriller, <laughs> although I did read more thrillers in the month of April. I'm going to change it up. Galen is about an orphan called Olivia Pryor and she lives in a boarding school for independent girls and the only thing she has left of her family is her mother's diary that slowly descends into madness and in this diary the last entry is that Olivia will be okay if she stays away from Galen. Then a letter arrives inviting Olivia to Galen, the very place that her mum didn't want her to go to. This pushes Olivia into a world of into the world of priors and what they do with their life. This was a very interesting fantasy. I gave it a 4.5 stars. I absolutely love V Schwab's work. I think that there will never be a time I don't enjoy Schwab's work. They just have a way with the words that is absolutely amazing. And I think that everyone can find something to enjoy in V Schwab's books. I do highly recommend this. I just, my only flaw with this book was I wish we spent more time in the dark side of Galen, but that is a very small gripe on my part. This book was beautifully written and it was a wonderful story. So if you're looking for something fantastical with a little bit of a dark side, then I would definitely recommend this book. Also, anything V. E. Schwab's ever written, I recommend. I have not read them all. I'm still working through their backlist, but everything I have read has been no lower than a four stars. And that tells me all I need to know. This is an all by author for me. And Gallant was a highly anticipated read of 2022. And I'm glad it was because I really super enjoyed this. So with my calendar layout done, I... What I normally do is I write my TBR in just normal black ink and then the books that I read I highlight in a colour and the colour will correlate to the colour on the calendar. So if I read Gallant by V.E. Schwab and put it as red then any red you see on the calendar is the days that I have read it and then in that small box I will write the amount of pages. This tracks my pages per day. It also tracks what I'm reading every month. I really like this kind of layout. It keeps me informed of what I'm doing and where I'm going with my reading. Also, it's really nice to look back and see what I was reading on what day. The next page is where I put my best book of the month, my worst book of the month. And I also leave a page free for reviews and... This doesn't necessarily have to be long form reviews. I just kind of write what I'm feeling about a book on a particular day because I don't want to forget like how I'm feeling when I'm reading. So I do tend to just write silly things in here. Like there might just be a character name with a heart or there might be gripes like in my last spread. I was really annoyed with a book. It is a book for a secret project at the moment and if I wasn't doing it for a secret project I would be DNFing it. It is the third book in a series and it is well well loved and I just don't, I'm not feeling it. So yeah like this page is just for any thoughts that I'm having as I'm reading and honestly it is what it is. But this gives me the opportunity to look back at any moment in my life and see what I was thinking, what I was reading. I kind of like the thought of having these as collectibles so that I can look at them in my future and 
along with my life journals I can see and remember things that I done and things that I was feeling so yeah I really enjoy this aspect of bullet journaling and journaling in general. So that is it. That is everything I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this spread. Please let me know down in the comments if you would do this spread, if you like this one. Also, I would really like to know what kind of videos you like in bullet journal form. I'm still learning. Sometimes I do voiceovers. Sometimes I do like talk while I draw, which takes a lot longer. And sometimes I just do like ambiance, like do you like a good mix? Is there one format you prefer over the others? I would really like to know what you guys like to see, so let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so very much for watching. Remember to stay safe, happy and healthy, and I shall see you next time. Bye! Pick it up from the top, hit restart. So far it's been so